Well, praise God. I want to just give you a Father's Day message this morning. And I was thinking about that you know, all this week. And, um, you, know, I, uh, you know, God is our Heavenly Father. Amen. If you receive Jesus as your personal Savior, you have been translated out of, a, out of the kingdom of darkness into God's marvelous kingdom of His dear Son's love. And so we are in a new family. Say, I'm in a new family. So really, and God is not just God to us. You know, uh, you know we, we pray to God, but God is really, we need to get a revelation that he's our heavenly father. Amen. Amen. We've got to get a revelation of that, that God is a good heavenly father and, and that he loves us and he delights in blessing us. The Bible actually says he delights in giving us the kingdom. Amen. So God delights in that, and, and I thought about this, I thought about the, the Lord's Prayer and using that as a template of, of the goodness of God and even contrasting that with earthly fathers and how we can maybe gleam off the Lord's Prayer to see, you know, the character and the love of, of God. And uh, so if you have your Bibles, open your Bibles to Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 9. And this is a place where... Uh, you know, Jesus' disciples, they wanted to know how to pray, and they asked uh, Jesus to teach them to pray, and, and this is what, you know, the scholars would say is the Lord's Prayer. How many people know the Lord's Prayer out here? Praise God. And so we're going to look at the Lord's Prayer as a template, and it says here, really, the very beginning, it's really interesting, when Jesus came, he made the relationship with God personal, and, you know, in the Old Testament, it, it was, you know, they served God out of fear, um, not a reverential fear, but a fear of judgment. And, um, and so, but in the New Testament, we should serve God out of love. Amen. We should not be afraid of God. We should be walking in love. And, and we should have a, a reverential fear of God, a, a holy awe of God. And when that is mixed in with our equation, we're going to see the blessings of God in our life. When we have the love of God coupled with the reverential fear of God, honoring God, that God is an awesome God that we serve, then we're going to really see God really move in our lives. We're going to have a greater, how many people want to be more intimate with the Father, amen? amen. And I don't know about you, but I, I want to be more intimate with God. I, I want to, you know, walk with God like, like Enoch in the, old, in the Old Testament. He walked with God and and the Bible said he walked with them for like, you know, many years, 300 years. And then the Bible says that God took them. Amen. In other words, took them to heaven. And uh, so most scholars would say that he was the first person that was raptured. Amen. And God couldn't, you know, God loved them so much. They had such a love relationship. God wanted him in heaven. Amen. And uh, we believe that was before the flood and it was. And so I believe that he, that God even wanted him to experience the flood. He would have been on the boat with Noah. Amen. And so here, um, it says here, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Uh, so, so here, this is the first stanza of the, of the prayer, uh, is our Father who, uh, who, 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 who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And so God is in heaven, his kingdom rules in heaven. But we've got to understand this, that, that God is not ruling everything down here on earth right now. That, you know, everything is not perfect down here. How many people realize it's not perfect down here? Amen. Anybody ever have any bad days? Amen. Amen. So do you, you realize it's not heaven yet. Amen. So, 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 so we're not in a perfect world. That's why imperfect things happen. Some people say, well, if God was so good, why does imperfect things happen? Why, does, why do people get killed? Because there's a devil in this world. And he's still, he, he's still here, uh, uh, you know, um, stealing, killing, and destroying. And so there is a devil down here. And actually the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 4.4, 4, uh, the Apostle Paul says the devil is the, the little God of this world system. Amen. So, so God in his overall rulership, he actually, and also he actually gives man some type of dominion. It's in Genesis. He's given us dominion. So man has dominion down here. So really, uh, really, whoever controls your soul will control your destiny. If the devil controls you, 
then he's going to destroy your life. If you allow God to come into your equation and you allow him to lead you and guide you, then God will lead you and guide you to all truth and all blessings. You believe that? Amen. So really, so, so Jesus was saying, our father in heaven. So, G, so, so God is ruling in heaven and he will rule down here when Jesus comes back. Amen. He's going to rule and, uh, and there's not going to be any any sin down here once once God is ruling down here but now you got sin you got people doing the wrong things so our father in heaven hallowed be thy name that word hallowed is an interesting word it really means that God is holy and he's he's to be re revered he's he's to be honored and so really we want to honor God if if you're a father out here you you want to teach your kids to love God and to honor God amen uh, you know, you honor God by, by getting up on Sunday morning and getting ready to go to church and loving what God loves. God loves the church. Yes. Amen. And so we should love the church. Amen? Amen. We should be excited about Sunday morning church. Amen. We should be excited about coming into the house of the Lord. We should be excited about, you know, spending time uh, under the, the, the word of God. Amen. And so really, our Father in heaven... How would be thy name? So, so in, in, in another sense, as being earthly fathers, uh, earthly fathers need to be honored as well. Amen. And so the man in the house should be honored because really the Bible says that he's the, he's the head of the household. He, 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 he sh he's the leader of the household. And unfortunately, uh, when you look at TV and you look at, you know, it's like the enemy's trying to always tear down the institution of the father. And, and the man in the house, and always the man in the house is always the stupid one, and the, and the wife is always the smart one. But, uh, you know, have you ever seen, notice that? You see that in commercials, that the dad is dumb as a box of rocks, you know, that he couldn't even find his way out of a paper bag. And, but really, you know, really, husbands are to be honored, amen? amen? Thank you, amen, for that amen. Some of the men should be amen a little louder, but anyway... But, 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 but as men, we want to be honored. We want to be respected. That's in us. Amen. You know, my dad's an old Navy man, and he taught, you know, us, me, and, my, and you know, I grew up with three other brothers and a sister, but he taught, taught us to respect and honor him and mom. And, you know, uh, every once in a while, you know, as kids, have you ever mouthed off at your mother? Yes. But my dad would not allow that. He would say, no, you don't, you know, she, you, she may be your mother, but she's my wife. And I said, oh, crossing a line here. And so, you know, even at, you know, even at my, you know, I don't talk bad or say negative things to mom with dad in the room, or that might be the last time I say something. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? Yeah. Amen. And the same thing, you know, husbands, you need to, you know, stick up for your wife. You need to stand for, uh, amen, can I, amen. can I, amen, you stand up for your wife, amen, you know, love her as Jesus loves the church, and she, she's, she, she needs to be loved, but she needs to be honored too, and, and, and teens and children out here, the Bible says, honor your mother and your, or your father and your mother, amen, amen. honor them, and so that you can live a long life, so honor is really key in God's book, but really the key is that that if, if a husband, if you're going to be honored, you got to be an honorable person. You have to be a man of honor. Amen. Have you ever seen that uh, movie, Men of Honor, amen? And so really, you know, we need to be men of integrity and honor. We need to be honest in all our dealings. Amen. And, you know, you know it's, it's more than what we say. Our actions speak a lot louder than what we say. Yeah. And so really we need to... Um, you know, uh, show our children that we're honorable people by being honest and upright. And, you, and we, we need to do that because the Bible says we need to train up our children in the admonition of the Lord. Amen? Amen. And so uh, another thing about, about hallowed, that, that God is holy. And, um, and God, you know, wants us to walk a holy life. Yes. Can I get an amen there? Amen. Yes. amen. And so, and so we need to learn to be holy in our conduct. 1 Peter 1, 13, 16 says this. 
Uh, therefore, gird up your loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust, as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct, because it is written, Be holy, for I am holy. And so really, we need to, we need to, to walk a holy life. What does that mean, uh, Pastor, to be holy? Well, the word holy means to be separate, to be, to be set apart for God's use. Really, it's to, for us to separate ourselves from the world system. Amen? Amen? In 2 Corinthians 6, look at this in 2 Corinthians 6. It says in verse 14, Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Amen. Amen. For what fellowship has righteousness with lawlessness? And what communion has light with darkness? And what accord has Christ with Belial? Or what part has to be, uh, what part has a believer with an unbeliever? And what agreement has the temple of God with idols? For you are the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk among them, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Therefore, come out from among them and be separate, says the Lord. Do not touch what is unclean, and I will receive you. And I will be a father to you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. So really, you know, when you first come into this walk as a Christian, you, naturally you're going to have, you know, uh, uh, non-Christian friends. You're going to have people that you've been hooked in with. But you know, either you, you know, uh, in the process of time, you either try to move them closer to God, get them saved... Or you're going to have to move away from them because they they can corrupt you, yes. amen. amen. And you know you you want to you know uh, it's good to have you know friendship evangelism, but you don't want to join them. Amen. And in other words, as Christians, we should live a little differently than the world. That's right. And you know I I'm very careful in walking you know the holy line. You know we need to walk the holy line and. You know, I'm careful with what I watch on TV, the movies that I look at. And, you know, I just found um, this streaming. Uh, how many people like watching movies out here? Amen. Amen. We got, the rest of you are holy people. But anyway, <laughs> uh, you've got four people. Raise your hand. The rest of you guys don't have a TV because it's the one-eyed devil, right? But anyway, back in the 50s, they used to say the TV is the one-eyed devil. Amen. I don't know about all that. I think there's good and bad on the TV, and you should choose wisely. And so anyway, there's a streaming company called uh, Vid Angel, and they actually, they're designed to take out all the negative things out of, out of the movies, like cursing and uh, sexual situations and all that. And you can stream movies and take all the negative stuff out. Of course, 90% of the movie probably would be gone. But, um, but, but, but you know, God's not, you know, he's not against us having fun. But we, we need to be very careful that we're not allowing things to come into our eye gates and our ear gates. And that we're not becoming like the world. The Bible says, do not be conformed to the world, but to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Amen. Amen? And so we want to make sure that that what we're watching is not affecting our spiritual life. Amen? Amen. In, in other words, in a negative way. And so, you know, Vid Angel, look that up. If you're a movie buff, look that up. And you can actually, it, it's amazing. I looked up one movie, it was a war movie, and, and it would say like 25 blasphemies, you know, and that's, you know, GDs and all that. And you don't need to be putting that in your, your system or even watching that with your children because they're going to pick up on those worldly things. Children are like recorders. Have you ever noticed that? And they will record everything you say, and they record what they watch, and they will just say it back to you. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. And so we need to be very careful. Amen. So, so here, he's saying here to be separate and to be set apart for God's use. And I really believe the, the walk of holiness 
is the, is the walk of revival in our life. And the closer we get to God, and, and, and the less we want to do the wrong things. Amen? And see, I'm going to say this. God will help us to be holy. That's why he gave us a Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's here to lead us and guide us and to check us. Amen? When things aren't going right. You know when you're not supposed to be watching something, men. Okay. Ladies as well, same thing. You know when you need to get your mind out of the gutter. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Because it can mess you up. Amen. The Bible says, the Bible says really to uh, submit yourself to God, resist the devil, and the devil will flee. And a lot of preachers, you know, when, when they preach in this particular verse... They just say resist the devil and he'll flee. But I don't believe you can accurately or really resist him until you're submitting to God. Amen. So the whole scripture is submit to God. Right. Amen. Then resist the devil and the devil will flee. I, you know, I was thinking about that because you know, some of us have the, you know, bad habits and vices and we're trying to stand against these things. I'm telling you, we just need to, when, when, when the enemy is trying to tempt us to go the wrong way... We need to do what Jesus did in the Garden of Gethsemane and pray. Amen. Amen. And Jesus prayed to a point where the Bible says he was sweating as drops of blood. I mean, you know, we need to get in that place of praying through until God gives us the grace to walk away. No temptation that is common to man. Amen. But God is faithful. Another thing here uh, in, in, in being holy uh, it's in 2 Chronicles 7, 14, says, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. So really, you know, as, as fathers, as mothers, as leaders, uh, we need to be turning away from those things that, that causes problems. And those sins, as a book in Hebrews chapter 12, that sin that so easily beset us. We need, a, we need to turn away from those things and turn to God. We need to repent and turn. As we do that, we'll see God come in and heal our families. Because the devil's out here to steal, kill, and destroy. And he's out here to destroy your life. Amen. And so what we need to do is line up with God because God's out here to bless our life. Amen. He's here to, you know, uh, to bless us and to, to, um, to uh, reveal his love to us. Amen. Amen. And so in, second, uh, so in uh, Hebrews 12, 14, this is a really good one about holiness. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Amen. Now this is... People see that and they say, oh man, that means I'm not going to go to heaven. No, I don't think that's what it means. Because if you're saved, you know, um, you are holy in a sense because God has set you apart for his use. But we have to set ourselves apart for God's use. Amen? Amen. And really what I was studying this out to see the Lord. In other words, that when we're not walking right with God, God becomes blurry to us. We don't see his goodness like we need to. We don't see his mercy we don't see his love like we need to. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? God becomes blurred in our vision. And I believe as we walk in holiness, God becomes more real to us. The love of the Heavenly Father becomes more real to us. He, he becomes more real to us. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? The, his, his nature of love and forgiveness and mercy becomes more real to us. We see the Lord for who he is. So they that walk holy, you will see God for who he is. A loving, heavenly father who loves you with an everlasting love. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? So as we walk holy, separate from this world system, we're going to see a greater move of God in our lives. Amen? Praise God. God is so good. And so this is a clear picture of God. And then it says here, um, we pray his kingdom come. His will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And so really, we want God's will to be done in our lives. We want His perfect will. And this just shows you the heart of the Father. God's perfect will is to be down here on earth like it is in heaven. And how is it in heaven, you may ask? Heaven is a wonderful place. 
It's a place of love and unity. It's a place of prosperity. You know, it's, it's a place where nobody is sick. Amen. Everybody's healthy and whole and sound. Amen. That's what, that what Jesus redeemed us from the curse of the law, which is threefold spiritual death. You got spiritual life in heaven. God wants us walking in spiritual life. In heaven, there's no sick people. God wants us walking in health. Amen. In other words, God is the author of, of healing and wholeness and soundness. The devil is the author of sickness. He's the one that comes to steal. I mean, sickness isn't a blessing. It's a curse. Some Christians still believe that sickness is a blessing of God. Last time I looked, it's a curse. It's a curse under the law. From not keeping the law, then, 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 then uh, the curse comes upon you in the Old Testament. But thank God, we, we're not under the curse, we're under the grace. We're under the grace of God, amen? Praise God. And so, and so we're redeemed from the you know, spiritual death. We have spiritual life. Jesus said, I came that you may have life. What does that mean? That you may have Zoe life, the God kind of life. Nothing broken, nothing missing. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? That's how God wants us walking, amen? Nothing broken, nothing missing, whole, praise God. And so really, so his kingdom come, his will be done. And so spiritual life and, and prosperity, you know, the Bible says in, in 3 John, it says, Beloved, I wish above all things you may prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. So God wants us prospering, praise God. He doesn't want us broke, busted, and disgusted. Amen. Amen. He wants us walking in prosperity, and that means having more than enough, yes. having your bills paid and being debt-free, amen, having more than enough to be a blessing to others. So really, that's the heart of the Father, is to be down here uh, on earth as it is in heaven. And really, and that's the way, uh, as an earthly father, we should want to have the blessings of God in our family, and we should have a desire to bless your family. Yesterday, we went out and... You know, we did some shopping and, you know, I, I felt good, you know, buying stuff for my family and just providing. And then we, we, you know, they took me out on an early Father's Day dinner to Long John Slivers and Long John Silvers, the forbidden fish, you know, <laughs> if you're trying to keep a diet. Amen. I'm trying to stay in shape myself because I'm not getting any younger. Amen. And so, but I'm telling you, it was good. That, I'm telling you, I love how many people like Long John Silver's out here? Amen, I'm telling you. But it can be fattening, man. They, 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 they uh, fry everything. Glory to God. But how many people like fried food out here? And I'm telling you, my kids loved it. It was wonderful. We were wearing the hats and everything. It was wonderful. So anyway, so we're looking at this. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. So, so God's desire is to be like heaven down here on earth. You know, um, also his kingdom come, you know, in Matthew 6, it talks about that we need to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And dads, as we seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, all these things will be added to us. Parents, as we, as we put God first place, then as we take care of God's kingdom, God's going to take care of our kingdom. Do you believe that today? Amen. You know, it talked about in Malachi and and uh, the prophet Malachi was talking to the, to the priest at that time and, and even to the people of God. And, and they weren't you know, giving the way they were supposed to in their sacrifices. They were giving broken down sheep and all this. This is in the book of Malachi. And God says, if I am a father, I should be honored with the best. And he rebuked the people. And Malachi rebuked the people for not really giving God you know, their best. And so really, when we start giving God our best, we're going to see his best. We're going to see his grace. We're going to see his provisions. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When we start putting God first place in our lives, when we start, start telling God that money isn't our priority, but you are our priority, then we're going to be giving with an open heart. Amen? Then we'll see, be seeing the blessings in our lives. I'm talking about tithing and giving offerings. When we start giving, we're going to see God's blessings in our life. My, my father is a great example of that, and I've mentioned this before, but he's been a tither ever since I can remember, and we never went, out, went without for anything in our household. 
And my dad has always been a giver. He's been a great example of, of a godly father. And so, you know, I am so thankful for that example and that I can follow in the footsteps of what he did. And, every, and he always gave, he always made us go to church. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Even if I got home after I was 18 years old and 2 o'clock in the morning, I was getting up for church the next morning. I knew where my bread was buttered. <laughs> and I didn't want to be out on the street. Amen. <laughs> so I, I could give God an hour a, day, uh, an hour a week. Amen. An hour a week. Praise the Lord. And so, and amen. So, so, so we need to honor God in our finances. And men, as you do that, God will honor you and start opening doors of grace and blessings. Teach your children to honor God in that area. Don't teach your children to be givers and not just takers. You know, that, that we need to teach our children to, do, to be givers. And you have to train up a child. You have to train people to give. It's not natural. In other words, selfishness is natural. We're all focused on ourselves. Amen? But really, selflessness is unnatural. And I find that the closer I get to God, the more selfless I become. The closer I start walking with God and focusing on God, the more I want to do for other people. The more I want to bless others. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? It, it, it's less on me and more on God and others. Amen. So as, as, we, as we love God, as we put him first place, we're going to see the blessings of God in our lives. Amen. You know, uh, the Bible says in 1 Timothy and that, well, it says, give us this day. Let's go with the next stanza. Give us this day our daily bread. You know, God wants to give you a fresh word every day. And he wants to reveal his love to each one of you every day. And so we need to get into his presence to get a fresh word. I don't know. I don't like stale bread. I don't like old bread. Amen. I, I, I don't like that. Yeah. I like fresh bread. I like fresh baked bread. And, you know, really, that's what God wants. He wants to give you a word every day. And when, you get into, and when you get into your study time and hopefully you, you get into the word every morning, men and, and ladies, and, and that, that you get into the word, get into the word until God speaks to you through the word. It's not the amount of time that you spend, it's the quality of time that you spend. And, and as God will reveal himself to you, that's how we start walking with God through his word. And he starts revealing truth to you and you start reflecting his glory. Are you hearing what I'm saying today? The more you start reading the word, and the, the word is the light, and the, the more light you receive, the less darkness you're going to walk in. Amen. Amen. And you're going to walk in the grace and the love of God. So give us this day our daily bread, we pray to the Lord. And as fathers, we need to be, be you know, taking care of our families. We need to make sure that we're, that we're doing the right things. That we're, you know, the Bible says in 1 Timothy 5, 8, but if anyone does not provide for his own, especially those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. So if we're not, if we're not doing what we're supposed to be doing, you know, maybe right now we, we, we're laid off, but we need to be looking for a job. Work is not a dirty word. You know, some people, you know, you know they, they, they don't like work and they saw the word Job in the Bible and they thought it meant job and they never read it. So listen, we, we need to work. We need to put our hands to something. Right. Amen. Even, even in church, you need to put your hands to something. If, even volunteering, whatever it takes, you should put your hands to be a blessing. That's right. And so, so God expects us to take care of our families and as we take steps to do that, I'm telling you, God will move. Amen? Amen. Praise God. And so, uh, so the next stanza is, forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. And God has already, this is sort of a, a template. It's an Old Testament uh, prayer. Uh, Jesus was in a contrast, moving from the old to the new. And so really, God has forgiven us of our sins. Amen. He has blotted out our sins. Amen. It says here, I, even I, this is Isaiah 43, 25, is he who blots out your transgressions for my own sake, and I will not remember your sins. And so really, we need to understand this, and as we're walking in the household, as, we're, as we have a relationship with our spouse and our children, we need to be people that forgive. Don't hold grudges. Don't hold things against your children. 
walk in love. If they mess up, you know, walk in love. Don't keep repeating their mistakes over and over again. You know, you know speak life to your children. Speak life to your spouse. You know, don't keep repeating the same thing. I remember, you know, this was B.C. before Christ. I got in late one day and uh, from, from, from the bar. I wasn't saved and, uh, you know, I stumbled in the house. My, I, still, I went to church, you know, I was, you know, but I wasn't saved. And I, I threw up on the floor uh, in the den. I was laying and my dad got up. He was working that day. He picked me up. He threw me down. He said, clean that mess up. But, you know, um, I, I'm glad he did. I was embarrassed. And I was cleaning that throw up, you know, at 530 in the morning. But you know what? He never said anything else about it. He never said, son, what's your problem? Ah, you know, he just told me just to clean it up, but never gave me another word about it. I must have did a good job cleaning it up. But anyway, anyway, he, he didn't dwell on my weaknesses. He didn't dwell on, you know, my, I, went, I, I was a piece of work back then. I mean, I mean, God had to do a lot of polishing to get me up here. I mean, I was a rough stone. Anybody, does anybody can relate? Any rough stones out here? Anybody that, that still needs some polishing out here? And I'm telling you, I still need to be polished. I'm, I'm still a little rough on the edges. I'm still trying to get my act right. Uh, is anybody like that out here? You know, that you're not exactly perfect, but God's not leaving you alone. And I'm glad that God's not leaving me alone. I, I'm glad that God is still working with me and that he hasn't given up on me. And, and that even though I do mess up and... I missed the mark. God's not judging me by an outward stance. He's judging me. Uh, he's looking at my heart. Amen. And so I'm glad that God doesn't judge how good we are by how many good things we do on the outside. But God is really looking at our hearts. He's, do we have a heart to serve him? Do we have a heart to put him first place? Do we have a heart for him? Amen. Oh, you hear what I'm saying to you? You know, King David, he did some bad things. You know, King David, you know, committed adultery and killed Uriah and killed one of his top people in the, in the military. And, and, but God saw his heart. You know, he, he had a repentant heart and, and God saw his heart and forgave his sin. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? God will look at our hearts as long as you have a heart that's going towards God. Amen? Is this, is this helping anybody today? And so we need, we need to be people that understand God's forgiveness for us. But we also need to be people that walk in forgiveness and not repeat a matter. Not repeat the shortcomings. But let it go. Amen? Amen. Throw it in the sea of forgetfulness. How do you know if you've really forgiven somebody? You don't think about, you know, that offense anymore. Amen. That offense is not connecting to a negative emotion. You may remember it, but you should not have a negative emotion attached to the offense. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? In other words, you made a decision to let it go. Just say, let it go. Let it go. Amen. And so really, so we need to walk in forgiveness. Amen. Uh, you know, in Psalms 86, 5, it says, For the Lord, uh, for you, Lord, are good and ready to forgive and abundant in mercy to those who call upon you. God is good. He's ready to forgive. And he's abundant in mercy. And love and kindness. That's the God that we serve. He's not trying to look at our misses. He's trying to look at what we're doing right. He forgives us for his sake. Why? So that he can walk with us in un unhindered fellowship. God desires your fellowship. God desires your love. Are you He's a God that desires you to walk with him. Amen. He hungers for his children to walk with him. What father doesn't want his child walking with them? I, I, you know, my, my son, uh, uh, my son, you know, he, uh, he's a wonderful son, but, you know, he's kind of, you know, he's kind of to himself. And, and it's really hard to get love from him at times. I'm telling you, he, Christian, he, you know, he's, he's like just really into his own self, into his own things, kind of like dad. But, um, and, um, and so, you know, it's really hard to get him. And when he comes out over and just to hug me or do something like that, that is special. Because he doesn't do it that much. So when he does, I'm like, wow, he's actually hugging me. I'm actually loved. You know, I mean, it's wonderful for him to come up and say, you know, even, even yesterday I was in the room and I was walking out. He said, Daddy. I said, oh, you called my name. 
My Lord, do you actually know that I'm here? <laughs> Amen. And, you know, it, 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 to a natural father, it's good that, that your children love you and they call upon you. Amen. And, 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 and Christian, he's sort of kind of, you know, he does his own thing. So when he, does anybody, know, you guys know Christian, right? You know, he, it, it, you, hey, Christian, he's like, <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. But God. But, but he's getting more loving and more caring. Daddy, you know, oh, man, he called my name. What, how do you think when, when we start calling out, Heavenly Father, I love you, I worship you, God's like, oh, I'm here for you. I'm here to do something for you. I'm here to bless you. What do you want, son? What can I do, daughter? What can I do for you? Amen. It, it, it delights me to give you the kingdom. That's what the Bible says, that God is delighted to give us the kingdom. Amen. And so we, we, we love that about God, and, and so we love that. And, and so, you know, the next part is uh, lead us not into temptation. And, and so we know that God doesn't tempt us with evil, the Bible says. But you know that, that, that we, we, we just pray and believe that, that whatever the enemy's trying to do to draw us in that thing, that God will bring us out of that. Amen? It says in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, No temptation is overtaking you except such as common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able, with, but with the temptation will also make a way of an escape that you may be able to bear it. Then there's no temptation that can come to you, dads, moms, uh, leaders in here, because the father's a leader. And I'm saying if you, even if you're not a father in the natural, you can still, if, you know, people do look up to you probably. And even if it's not people, it's your dog. Somebody's looking up to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you today? <laughs> And you need to learn to be a leader, amen? And to know if you can lead yourself, you're a leader. And so really, lead us not into temptation. And so God won't lead us into temptation, but, but, he will, but if there is a temptation, the enemy's trying to tempt us because the devil is the tempter, that God will always make a way of an escape. The Bible says our weapons are not natural, but they're mighty in God to the pulling down of, of strongholds. In other words, there's no weakness that can overcome you. Because God will give you greater grace to overcome any weakness that you may be dealing with. Amen. Are you hearing me today, saints? Yes. And then the, the last stanza is, deliver us from evil. God has already delivered us from the evil one. Amen? He paid the price. On, Jesus paid the price on the cross. And he whooped the devil for us 2,000 years ago. And what we just need to do is submit ourselves to God, like I said earlier. Resist the devil and he will flee. Amen. All we have to do is stand in God. God is with us. No weapon formed against you shall prosper, the Bible says. The gates of hell shall not prevail against you. you know, there might be things coming at you or things you're dealing with, but the God that we serve is bigger than those things coming against us. The Bible says, greater is he who, Jesus, that's in us, than he who, the devil, that's in this world. you got the greater one abiding on the inside of you. Amen. Do you believe that today? Do you believe? I believe that every parent, every father, even the mothers, whoever you are, that you're leading somebody, God will give you the grace to do it. He will give you the ability to do it. And all you have to do is just take the steps to walk in God and you will see your families flourish in Jesus' name. You believe that today? Let's bow our heads in prayer. Father, we honor you this morning and we thank you. Oh, we thank you for calling us out of darkness into your marvelous light. Thank you for adopting us into your family. Thank you for calling us sons and daughters of the Most High. Thank you that we're not just servants, that we're children of the Most High. Perhaps you're listening today, maybe you're watching online, and you don't have that understanding that God is your Heavenly Father. He wants to reveal that to you today. And you, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life because Jesus is the doorway to God being your Heavenly Father. So if you never ask Jesus into your heart, today is the day of salvation. Just pray this prayer after me, and congregation, you can reaffirm this, your faith in this prayer. Just say, dear God, I believe, Jesus, you died on the cross for my sins. Jesus, 
I believe that you were raised from the dead for my justification. Jesus, I repent of sin and I receive you today as my Lord and my Savior. Thank you for saving me. Father God, fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen.